<laughs> okay, are we good now? We good now? <laughs> uh, sorry, guys. Um, thank you, Lobo, for pointing that out. Let's start that again. Hey, everybody. Um, welcome to this Demon Slayer podcast thing that I arranged. I am your host, Sofa Lordia, and joining me today, we have Pepe Motu. Mosu, mosu. Uh, I, I, I just love discussing anime with Pepe here. We've been doing it for a long time. If you know our history of like Kazumatsu, um, I don't know. Did we ever get you on a Rokenjima podcast, Pepe? I'm, I'm pretty sure I was involved in a few, uh, Figurashi Figurashi podcasts. Ones, yeah. Yeah. Maybe chapter five at least. Or chapter yeah. Three. So I, I don't remember. It's been so too long. We've had like an, a innumerable number of podcasts together so i guess we're like super comfortable discussing anime with each other at this point just but yeah like i think people really liked our um our roast of kami day <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah i thought why not Very nice roast. why not continue this and discuss another anime that we both have opinions about um and this is demon slayer and if you have if you've been living under a rock for whatever reason demon slayer is one of the highest grossing anime ever i think for a time it overtook one piece i don't know if it still is uh though i guess it i should say anime and, still is, yeah. anime and manga like it's it's the manga also sells extremely well um but i know that the recent movie that came out mugen train um i think that is like one of the highest grossing films in Japan ever. Like, I'm, I, if I'm correct, I believe it beat Spirited Away. So, kind of a big deal. Um, so, I guess the question is, like, are we going to be roasting this anime today, <laughs> given the precedent of um, Kami Sama ni Natahi? And the answer is a little bit more mixed, um, because me and Pepe actually have differing opinions about this anime. Aye, aye. Um, so, yeah. you, why, why don't you... <laughs> who, who wants to start? Where should we start, for the negative or the positive? <laughs> um, well, why don't you, like, give your overall thoughts, and then I can give my overall thoughts, and then we can move on from there. Yeah, I don't think there's going to be much structure to this, but um, I just want to emphasize that um, this is viewer uh, participation is encouraged, so if you have any thoughts or comments you want to make, please leave them in the chat, and we'll do our best to respond to them, and who knows we'll, we'll see wherever this conversation takes us so i guess i guess for me my generally general feelings about uh kimetsu no yaiba uh the blade of demon destruction is <laughs> this is the transliterated title that's a very very literal translation <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um yeah i i feel bewildered by it is how i would best describe it because I, I, I see how massively popular this series is, and I watched it, and I don't get it. I wouldn't say it's a bad anime. It's not like, it's not, not nowhere near like Kami Day, um, but it's just unremarkable to me. It felt like very generic, very middle of the range, like solid six out of ten anime, like. I don't understand why people are crazy for it, why it's so crazy popular. That's what bewilders me. And I, I don't know how to reconcile that, but hopefully this discussion may help us work towards something of an answer to that question. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, as for me, I, I quite liked it. I mean, it's not anywhere near any of my favorite animes um if i were to rate it i'd give it an eight out of ten maybe a nine if i felt if i were on a good day that's so but generous then, <laughs> i don't know it, it's fun it was fun it was a fun watch i enjoyed most of the scenes except the scene where zenitsu was screaming like a baby too much but anyway. yeah um i want to <laughs> anyway. say like the way, around the episodes where zenitsu was like introduced and we had like the um the the crazy spooky house that rotates. I pretty much, I, I, I actually dropped the show for a bit there. I was just, I just can't do it anymore. Right. It's horrible. I'm so annoyed. Right. Like, what, why is this character so annoying? Why? 
<laughs> Everyone's screaming. What's that, going on? <laughs> that is, I think, a, a universal opinion about about this. End. But anyway, I I like it enough to actually go ahead and read the whole manga, and mm. I've I've read it all the way to the end. Mostly because it wasn't that long to begin with. Like if it was as long as One Piece, I wouldn't have even bothered. But yeah, it 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 was fun. Even the manga was fun, and I think. I can very much understand why it's so popular, and I'll get into that, I guess, a bit later. Yeah. Uh, so, one thing, one one surface level, level thing I can comment on is it feels like this anime is very tonally confused. Like, I'd say the first 10 episodes where it was just Tanjiro uh, and his sister going around from town to town, it had a pretty consistent theme. Um, uh, uh, sorry, a pretty consistent atmosphere where it was very solemn and like introspective, and it was chill. Like it, it's not really like super interesting to me, but it was like a chill vibe going on. It was very like it almost reminded me a little bit of Mushishi if you remember that anime. Um, but. Then Zenitsu is introduced, and suddenly the show is so loud and so obnoxious. <laughs> it's like I don't, I don't understand. Like Inosuke as well. Like when he was first introduced, I hated his guts, and I was just like everyone just screaming and yelling, and Tanjiro was just like trying to be quiet, and it's just like this isn't funny. This is just really annoying. <laughs> Uh, but then I kind of grew on, I grew to like Inosuke a little bit better as the show went on when he kind of, he had, he had his arc during the um, run of the anime where he kind of mellows out a lot after realizing that his way of viewing things isn't absolute. And I liked that. I liked that he changed. Zenitsu didn't change. He just got worse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they they both have their moments at least. Um, they have yeah. But uh it's like, you know, the only moments where Zenitsu is being cool is when he's being his body is basically being hijacked by a second personality. <laughs> like it's got nothing to do with his main personality. It's, it's his main personality is a coward and doesn't want to be there and is always screaming and pissing his pants like a piss boy. I don't know. <laughs> Pretty much. It's just I mean, what's likable about that. Concerned. Oh. Yeah, it, it. The only thing we're given is the fact that it, he is indeed a coward, you know. Yeah. And it even shows in in his whole training arc, like he didn't even want to be there. He didn't want to do it, but yeah, he was pushed there anyway. And even even up up to the end, like he he still doesn't know why he's there. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, that's my problem. Like, I'm not <laughs> saying I hate cowards on principle. There are some really good cowards in anime. Um. You could kind of argue that one of my favorite ca characters, Hamazura, has a little bit of cowardice. But then you have characters that are that are show they're afraid of things, but also work through that fear and like actually do shit. Like that's admirable. Um, to use a contemporary example, fucking Luigi, <laughs> like from Mario and Luigi, like. Um, in Luigi's mansion, like, he's always afraid, but he's always pushing through for his big bro, and that's, like, an admirable trait. But then you have a character like Zenitsu, who is a coward, and that's it? <laughs> he's just, yeah, that's it. He doesn't really push through his cowardice, he's just kind of complaining constantly. And he has a split personality that kicks in and does cool things sometimes. God damn it. Yeah, I think there's, that... There's one cool thing... <laughs> Yeah, he, he he cut good, <laughs> <laughs> and that's just a very surface level complaint. I know, like if you're just honing in on one character as your reason to hate the show, then that's not very good. Thankfully, I have other reasons. <laughs> well, let's get into them then. Like, All right, I, I won't argue against Zenitsu because I don't like him either. <laughs> yeah, I think I think Zenitsu is like an easy punching bag when it comes to criticizing. Uh, Kimetsu no Yaiba. So that's one thing that I don't want to dwell on for too long. Um, let's see. What else are my problems? I don't like any of the characters, really. I think they're all really bland. Tanjiro even, is... Even Tanjiro? Yeah. Tanjiro... Oh, I don't hate him, but I don't like him either. It's like he's a pure soft boy. Um, he sticks to his virtues and is generally a good person. 
and that's good. I I like kind and compassionate characters over more like uh, obnoxious characters. I I don't dislike that, but he doesn't give me anything to latch onto to really think. Oh, this is an interesting character. It's just kind of bland. It, it, I don't know how to really put it other than that. He just doesn't give me anything to latch on to. Well, uh, he is definitely, uh, I guess, main character foil that you can kind of, not really self-insert, but you can kind of follow. Like, his 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 personality isn't too complicated. Like, yeah. just from what is presented from the first few episodes, you know what he's like and you know yeah. what he's going to do and you can kind of follow his motivation. Yeah. I think uh, that's the benefit of the story. Like, his, his backstory isn't too complicated. And, you know, at, at least you can kind of figure out where, what he's going to do, where he's going to go. Um, mm. In one way, that makes it kind of boring. Mm. But that predictability is also what gives it its appeal in a way uh, especially the mainstream appeal you think so because when i think of how predictable kimetsu no yaiba is i think that's a big weakness of the story to me um it's well tanjiro at least is predictable but what happens to him is not all that predictable is what i'd argue you think so yeah know. Depends I mean, how 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 big your imagination is, at least. <laughs> I don't know. Like everything that happens to Tanjiro follows a pretty predictable pattern. You've got a demon shows up, Tanjiro. Um, you know he he wants to stop them because he's a demon slayer. He stops them. No, no. Before that, the demon will give him a really hard time, and he'll struggle for a bit and not be able to fight back. But then he'll start breathing good. And then he'll pull out a, a fancy sword swipe and he'll cut through a thing he couldn't cut through before. And then he feels sorry for the demon. And that's pretty much how it goes for every battle in the series. That's exactly what I'm talking about. That that kind of expected uh, formula is what I think gives it part of its mainstream appeal. Because you have this character that you see and there are things that you want to happen to him. Like you don't, of course, you don't want him to lose because he's the main character, and you support him, you support his uh, personality, and you know, uh, it's the act of uh, waiting for it to happen, waiting for something you want to happen actually happen is is the payoff for some. In a way, it's it's kind of cathartic at the end. But there's so many other shows that do predictable hero things. Like, what's why sure. is this one special? What 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 sets this above every other shonen manga or anime? Okay, disclaimer on that: I have not watched much shonen <laughs> anime or read much shonen manga. <laughs> yeah, but I think, well, at, at least uh, as far as the arcs are concerned. Uh, one of its draw, one of its appeal is that it never drags on too long, I think. Uh, I've had such a bad experience with the shonen manga back in the day where an arc would just go on and on and like the, the, the amount of chapters one arc would span is longer than the entirety of Demon Slayer and that's just, <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, it gets tiring. Yeah. So like. It's it it becomes pretty clear, like you know what's happening now and what's gonna happen next, and uh, you're not sitting waiting for the story to progress. It there is constant progression. Okay, there's still lots of other anime that are fast and snappy, though. Okay, yeah, that <laughs> is true. <laughs> like nothing Comparing you're describing it... is unique about Demon Slayer, and that's Com I don't know if we're gonna escape that. <laughs> Comparing it to other anime, though, I think uh, I'd, I'd like to bring in what I call the Rotten Tomato scale. Uh, I think we, we discussed this in chat before, but uh, it is very predictable. Uh, it doesn't bring anything new to the table. But at the same time, you know, it, you don't really have a reason to think badly of it. Like, even you gave it a 6 out of 10, but I can think of anime that uh, many other people would rate 2 out of 10 or 3 out of 10. Uh, yeah, and... so it's not a kami day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And 
uh, like if if you're familiar with the way Rotten Tomatoes works, it doesn't rate it on a on a on a scale of how good it is. It's just simply a percentage of how many people thought of it positively, mm. and uh, I think that's why it's so popular because there's not much I, I there's not much you know that that'll make someone dislike it like actively dislike it you know. But is that enough to to make like why is it that everyone is drawn to it to want to read it or watch in the first place? What is the the hook? Because there's mm. billions of not billions, but there's a lot of manga and anime out there. And why this one? Why is this the one that everyone is talking about? Also, yeah, That's... if you want me to get more into negatives, I can. <laughs> I'm not done. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. Why is it the one? It's complicated. Uh, the virality is definitely one thing. Um, the morality. People watch it because their friends watch it. Yeah, is that the right? Is that the is that the word? Virality. Oh, virality, virality. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like word yeah, of yeah. mouth. Yeah. So I mean, I I only watch it because everyone else was saying it was good. Yeah. And I'm sure there are a lot of other anime that I don't watch that I would probably enjoy. I just don't hear the word of mouth of it. Yeah. You know. I really. And that's. Yeah. Yeah. And well, to to be fair to the anime, it was executed very well. You 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 photobol did. Excellent animation in, in yeah. That's in why and, yeah. that's why I first heard of Kimetsu no Yaiba. Why people were talking about it because it's like oh my god, it's like Ufotable doing like movie level production for a shonen anime. Well, you can call it movie level production if you want, but I think it's a bit below that. But um, yeah, like I, I won't. Movies are worse anyway. <laughs> Out spicy, <laughs> um, but yeah, like um. I'm not going to argue it's not pretty because those sword slashes, the animation stuff is really good. Uh, I think probably my favorite one in the series was um, Shinobu. Is that her name? The Hashira? Mm, yeah. Um, yes. when, when she did her like butterfly slash thing and like it had that like really like slow butterfly effect and then it just like zips to her really quickly slashing through him. And I thought that was... Mwah. Mm. Bueno. Yeah, that was fun. That to was watch. some good sakuga. Um, it's just from the level of reading a story, watching a story, I can't engage in this in the series. It it's like well, I mentioned the tonal inconsistency is one thing, but you've also got like the battles are really boring. Like it, it really just comes down to what I said. Like every battle is just Tanjiro gets beaten up a lot. He breathes good, and then he wins. And as someone who, like, really appreciates a good fight scene, none of these scratch that itch. You know, a lot of people hyped up the um the battle with the spider kids as, like, the pinnacle of the anime for, for his fight scenes. And that was still the same shit. It was literally just, like, Tanjiro is getting his ass kicked a bit harder than usual this time. And then... He thinks of his dad, his dead dad, and he gains a new a new sword slash. Like, it's just not satisfying. That's not satisfying to me. It's not even like he earned that. He, he just kind of pulled it out of his ass when he was about to die. And that's the worst thing you can do in a fight scene. It's the absolute worst thing. It's a death ex machina. The... They give an explanation to that, don't they? The reason why your life flashes in front of your eyes before you die is so you can find. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm just making an excuse. But to be <laughs> fair to Tanjiro, it, it wouldn't have been possible if if he didn't had the you know the prerequisite training. Like he he knew that uh, breathing technique, quote unquote, from from his father. But if he didn't train like mad before the whole thing started, he wouldn't have had the physical ability to actually execute it you know it just doesn't feel earned like he could have trained any amount and if he was about to die oh i got a new ability a flash before my eyes like it's just a bullshit excuse they can throw out to turn a fight scene around you know when i measure the value of a fight scene i think of like there's, there's, there's so many different ways you can evaluate a fight scene but one of the big things for me is how much thought is actually put into mm -hmm. it to secure victory like and when it comes to these battles, they're 
brain dead. The only ones that are thinking are the villains. Tanjiro's just, he's just, oh, I got to slash good, but I can't. He's too, he's, he's, his skin is too hard. Uh, but maybe if I breathe right, then I'll slash right. Like, I don't know. It's it's. Let me let me add something to that. Sure, um, I'm I'm ranting too much. I think I think what made that scene for me, what really made it for me, was the was the fact that yeah, he he pulled the technique out of his ass, and he used it on as he was on the verge of death. But hmm. you have to remember, that technique did not earn him victory. That's true. I I forget that. <laughs> it, he, he even though he used the most powerful technique he could have thought of uh, the the demon still escaped death and was about to you know kill tanjiro if, if and you know what didn't come this, in and but this is what just, i mean like you know, the demons yeah. are the ones that are actually strategizing and pulling off interesting techniques <laughs> the humans are just like mashing one button over and over until they win <laughs> well Tanjiro is at least, but uh, you Inosuke know, definitely when, is. When Giyu steps in, he, he, he's it's repeatedly mentioned that the Hashira are on a whole different level, and that kind of really shows, um, you know, just how lacking Tanjiro is. Yeah, and I think that's what made it. If if if, if he was able to kill the demon with just that slash, I think I would have felt the same way that you did. But that's yeah. true, that's true. He did lose, so that is something to consider. <laughs> but it still doesn't erase my point that that's all the battles in this show really yeah. are. <laughs> like, all the characters have one move, and it's just whether the story is convenient enough for, for them to actually win. <laughs> if, if it's any consolation, the, the next battles aren't as, you know, Deus Ex Machina as that. I think that was the biggest that I remember, mm. even from the manga. So Lobo, you have some thoughts in chat. I want to hear what you're thinking. And I just realized I hid the chat. Oh no. <laughs> um, I'm gonna have to read up chat. Um, read out chat live for our viewers. So what's your big negative, Lobo? I wanna hear this. Doki Doki. Suspense. <laughs> It's incredibly ah, sexist. Interesting. Mm. That's that's an interesting take. What do you make of this, Pepe? Ah, uh, damn. Um, <laughs> this is I a can't spicy argue take. with that. <laughs> yeah. It's it's a status quo. Um, it portrays everything within the status quo, and the yeah. current status quo of the world is well sexist. Yeah, Lobo is pointing out here that the main girl is literally an unspeaking, obedient girl kept in a box. Eh, yeah, I guess. But she does fight. At least she fights. Like, if this was another more sexist anime, like, they just keep her in the box forever. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, um, all, all females uh, who get a tragic backstory generally involves physical abuse. Men's backstories are, I couldn't do the thing I wanted. Eh. I think what you're describing is a lot more emblematic of the times. I, I, I don't know if that's an excuse necessarily, but those are, it's, it's, I don't know. It's, it's not an excuse. I mean, it's, again, going back to the mainstream appeal, as much as I hate to say it, not majority of the people, especially in Japan, aren't really very forward thinking when it comes to this. Um, it's kind of a fact of the matter thing to them or, yeah you know and i don't think anyone watching this is expecting it to break any barriers at the same time i also don't think uh it doesn't really treat them well it's not it it may be sexist but it's not misogynistic is is i think what i want to say yeah i mean there are female fighters and they're really strong Mm. But I, I I won't argue that there isn't like a degree of sexism in the show, but I wouldn't think of that as the first major complaint I'd have this series. Like, yeah, well, again, personally. it it's not enough to make people hate it. I think, um, yeah. like I I guess even Lobo rated it a seven, but it's also not. Uh, it doesn't really make it anything amazing in that regard. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not winning any points, but. Just saying, like I, 
I do know a lot of um women that would consider themselves feminists that like this show. So, you know. <laughs> Well, okay, six. It's a six because of that. But anyway, that's still... Yeah. Uh, this isn't really talking about average. the story too much, though. So, like, you know, we'll, 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 let's talk about something different. Um, maybe I should talk about something I did like in the show, a, a, a change of pace. Um, I quite liked the final episode of the anime. Um, specifically, Tanjiro's conversation with Kanal. I believe that was her name. The um, mute girl. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Right. For some reason, like, this was the first scene in the show where I'm like, oh, this is good writing. <laughs> um, I don't know. Like, it was it was ultimately relatively simple, but something about it struck an emotional chord with me where Tanjiro is just, you know, trying to interact with this girl who doesn't open up her heart to anyone. She, she says to him, like, I, I literally don't care about anything. I've, you know, she's, she's, she's so traumatized that she has like no ego basically is how she describes it. Well, she doesn't use those words, but you know, um, and Tanjiro's interpretation of this is, is amazingly optimistic, but it's, uh, it's refreshing. Like he just describes it as, oh, the voice in your heart is just really quiet. So maybe I can help you listen to that quiet voice more and make it louder. And that's, he does that whole like coin flip thing. And I don't know, that was like really sweet and like sensitive of, of Tanjiro Mm. to like, you know, really get in someone's head. That's, you know, otherwise kind of like completely different to him and actually make a genuine heartfelt attempt to try to understand her, but also to, give her a different perspective on things and we don't see the outcome of that i don't know if that's in the manga or not um but it's just a really sweet gesture and it it felt like surprisingly introspective for this show compared to like a lot of the rest of the stuff i don't know i really like that scene that was a very good scene i have to admit it was one of my favorites as well um And, you know, it, it just goes to show that they're able to make Tanjiro a likable protagonist. And, yeah. you know, uh, time and time again, I, I, I read about shonen manga or shonen anime where, you know, a lot of people poke fun of on the protagonist. Like, mm. you know, everybody calling Kirito a, a god or something like that. <laughs> just one example. But anyway, uh, yeah, so it's it's that humility, I think, gives him that uh, appeal yeah I, I i am inclined to agree um for, for mostly anime i don't think he does enough to be like an interesting character for me but that one scene at the end kind of made me think oh you know this this ain't bad you know <laughs> we could have got a much worse protagonist <laughs> you know I, yeah. I, I i like characters that are like really sensitive to the hearts of others especially people that are so different from themselves and, you know, yeah, he doesn't get enough interaction with human beings that he can actually talk with to really yeah, show that. That's um, very true. He's too busy fighting, and yeah. <laughs> you know, you don't get the chance to do that when you're fighting. That's very true. Um, another complaint which a lot of people have raised is how the story is so heavy-handed on the sad backstories for their villains, and it always comes at the very end, like right when they're about to die. Um, so there's like, it, it's, it's really hard to like care about any of these backstories because usually the backstory is just like not enough to redeem the character or if, if there is something you can empathize with, it's like, it doesn't matter because they're dead anyway and there's no room for growth or anything. It's just kind of sad. Um, but the real one that really got me was like the spider kid, like, how we were re- it was really pushing for us to empathize with him, even though we saw how badly he abused all of those people he called his family. And like, it's like, doesn't really justify anything. It just feels kind of ham fisted. I mean, what I can say to that is, I don't think they were trying to make us empathize, empathize with him. Uh, he he's still meant to be hated and the demons are still meant to be hated. It's just a reminder that they too used to be human. So, you know, mm. um, you gotta wonder, is it the demons themselves that 
you should hate or is it what made them into those things that you should hate i think that's an overarching theme, uh, yeah. theme of the anime yeah know? yeah yeah uh because uh the main antagonist really is muzan and um i Michael think you're, you're meant to yeah michael jackson <laughs> <laughs> god damn so yeah, anyway you're, you're 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 meant to see that he's the one who really puts them in in that kind of position to begin with because he's the one turning everyone into demons yep yeah yeah um it is interesting that you know it is like i guess sort of it is a revenge story like i don't think he's hoping to bring his family back to life or anything but he's very kind for a character driven by revenge it's like very unusual almost <laughs> this isn't a criticism it's just an observation Yep. Yeah, I don't know if that goes anywhere in the manga. But I will say, um, on that note, there is another character I really enjoyed watching, uh, which was Shinobu. Um, because she's so multifaceted, and that's interesting. Like, the whole idea that she was originally very, like, uh, brash, I guess would be one way to put it. But then mm -hmm. her sister was, like, the kind and gentle one. And then her sister ended up dying to demons and Kanao developed an intense hatred for demons and a desire for revenge, wanting to completely eradicate all of them. But she decided to be more like her sister and repress her emotions under like a facade, quote unquote, of like gentleness. And then she's kind of developed this internal conflict of whether she be, she wants to be like her sisters and be like her sister and empathize with the demons or, you know, give into her hatred and hate them. And it's like, that's a really interesting character conflict. Uh, that's why I kind mm. of think Shinobi is probably the most interesting character in the show so far. You know, I, I do agree with you. Um, I think, uh, <laughs> I guess a little bit of a spoiler, but, uh, she definitely deserves more uh, scenes, both in the anime and in the manga, because mm -hmm. of that part of her. Um, yeah. yeah. So, don't don't expect to see a lot more of uh, Shinobu in the manga. Well, uh, she'll be there, but uh, you know, a lot of other pillars get a lot more screen time. Yeah, I want to talk about this because I've spoken with some other people. Um, shout out to Celeste Castell. Um, she reckons that the main appeal of Kimetsu no Yaiba for Japanese audiences is the Hashira, um, mm. which is interesting to me because like the Hashira barely appear at the anime. They're only like really in the last few episodes. And even then, Shinobu's the only one we really get to know. So all these other Hashira, I'm going to be honest, my first impression of them is not good. <laughs> like it, it, it feels to me first watching them is just they're just one one bit characters that are really leaning into like some quirky archetype and that's their entire character but celeste castell seems to think that's not the case um do you have any take on the hashira um if you just limit yourself to the anime the only thing you really get to see of them is is the meeting with uh with the, their leader i forget the but yeah, uh, I I can see why you'd think that they're kind of one-dimensional, especially especially characters like Kanroji, uh, who just you know fall in love with everyone. Oh, uh, the love Hashira, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it gets better, definitely. Okay. Uh, if if anything, I would argue that. Uh, the anime is like a gateway. Uh, you you get into it because you hear it's good, because the animation is good, and you know. Um, yeah. Because we got we uh, got to remember watching. We got to remember yeah. manga reader. Manga reading is huge in Japan compared to anywhere else mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. us Westerners, we don't read much manga. Like when we do, it's usually if we really like an anime, and then we decide to read the manga. But in Japan, like sometimes the manga just comes first, and the anime is just like yep. a little bonus advertisement. Yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of well, a lot of companies use anime as a way to advertise the manga because manga yeah. brings in a lot more well revenue. And yeah, if once you get past the chapters of the anime, the Hashira have a lot 
more involvement. Like, I think every arc afterwards has at least one, sometimes two Hashira involved pretty mm. primarily. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, the, you, the poster boy agree, of the movie is, yeah. You, do you agree with Celeste Castell's take that they get a major appeal for people of the, to the series? I would. I would say once you get past the Mugen train arc, uh, if you've watched it or if you've read it, yeah. then yeah, uh, it's definitely one of the bigger appeals. Because uh, okay. you, you, you get to know uh, Ren, Renju? Ren, I forget his name. The, the Flame Pillar. Yeah. Right. You get to know him. And he's, I would say he's an uh, infinitely better character than, <laughs> than Zenitsu and Tanjiro and... Uh, Inosuke. So yeah, it's um, really it's strange you... that like they made like the good characters like not even the main characters. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah, um, it makes you want to learn more about the rest of the Hashira, and I I felt that uh like I even wanted to spoil myself by going on wikis and you know finding out about them. Right. Which I ended up doing, but anyway, <laughs> it's one way to experience an anime. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, um. Lobo brought up an interesting point, just on a different topic. Um, ev basically, every demon we've seen can talk, but Nezuko can't for some reason. What the hell is that for? Like, I, I think I think that probably ties into what Lobo was saying about how it feels sexist, that for some reason she alone can't talk and can't disobey, but every other demon can talk for some reason. God. Yeah, that is a bit weird now that I think about it. <laughs> yeah, um... I it's really more to do with her kind of repressing her her demon powers. Yeah, uh, if I will, there there is a story reason for that. Um, she can grrr, she can growl at people. <laughs> yeah, she can growl at people. I I I haven't thought much into what what it means for her as a character. Uh, but you know, there is a there is an explanation. It would have been more interesting if if they actually got her to talk yeah in the anime but yeah um yeah even if there's a story reason doesn't mean it's okay um it would have been better if she had a lot more uh what's the word for it? agency agency there we go yeah yeah it, it would have been better if she had a lot more agency uh and i think it would have made her you know more more a part of the cast rather than you know just being there being the the token girl <laughs> yeah yeah. Yeah, I see what you're saying, well, Lobo. I, I can't disagree well, with that. <laughs> yeah, at at the least I'm thankful that uh, you know, she's the protagonist's sister and not some love interest, which is what again what we usually see in Yeah, that's true. Anime. Though Zenitsu if, is if, like if totally she creeping was a on love her. Interest, that would have been so much worse. But Zenitsu's Sorry, you, you... Yeah, Zenitsu's like totally creeping on her all the time though, so He's he's creeping on everyone, but yeah. <laughs> That's true. I like there was that one scene where it's just like Zenitsu, you need to learn to respect women. It's like, thank you for calling it out, anime. <laughs> At least you called it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, it's 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 not okay, but it is what it is, I suppose. Um Yeah, again, it, it falls it falls down the the marker of being acceptable for society, which is not a good thing for society, but most people are able to brush it off. I think most people just brush it off as cute, but I don't know. Yeah. She's like a puppy, you know? You just keep her in the box and you pet her. And... <laughs> some, some people like her because of that you know yeah that's definitely an appeal point for some people <laughs> not for me <laughs> um i'm trying to think what else i have to say about the show um i mean i basically like the what? I, I think i've summed up a lot of it like the characters yeah. are uninteresting to me Maybe the Hashira get more interesting because I haven't read further in the manga yet. But that's what I've been hearing that they are more interesting, and I do, I do like Shinobu, so that is a good sign. Um, the fights are uninteresting. The um, the story is just kind of one direction. It's just fight the demons, get to Mizan, kill Mizan, and save the day. Probably, maybe there's some twists along the way, but. As of the anime, nothing really has deviated from expectation. It's all about 
Gaman, I guess, is like the one phrase that keeps getting uttered in this anime, which is, I guess, it feels like a martial arts anime is um the mm, kind of idea right. I was thinking. Like, it's not really a battle anime. It's just a martial arts anime of honing your skill and reaching enlightenment through the blade sort of thing, <laughs> um, which maybe has more appeal to a general Japanese audience. I'm thinking maybe, maybe the story has appeal because there aren't many really like Japanese feeling anime lately. Most of them are taking on a more Western sort of aesthetic. Like one of the big shonen series at the moment is uh, My Hero Academia, which is extremely Western. Uh, One Piece, which is always the anime. Yeah, One Piece, which has always been like more Western than Eastern. Um. I'm trying to think of other popular shonen yeah. series. Um, I, I have read an article that that uh, that did bring that up. Um, it's, I guess, kind of a renaissance of uh, of traditional Japanese art and traditional Japanese style. That, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I guess a lot of, as you said, a lot of uh, current popular shonen uh, manga and anime are all Western, and yeah. you know, having this thing, having this series, which is generally good and uh, has a totally different feel to it is i think what uh, sets it apart yeah and maybe that's what's helped it reach a more mainstream audience because it feels so japanese like yeah. you watch this and you're like oh yeah this is familiar yeah um it, whereas you you what you pick up say maybe like one piece on my hero and it's like oh this is that weird anime <laughs> like i can see the i can see an old japanese man sitting down with uh, kimetsu no yaiba and like getting it like you know what i mean mm. At, yeah, if at least I mean, up until like Zenitsu appears, then maybe not. But <laughs> yeah, I'd like to you know kind of expand on the whole mainstream thing because um, I think a lot of people tend to misinterpret. Um, it's not mainstream, just as far as anime goes. It's like it's not the kind of anime that uh, every every anime fan, every otaku yeah, yeah, yeah. fan has seen. Yeah. It's mainstream to the point that even people who don't watch anime and don't yeah. read manga have gotten into it. Yeah. And like, you know, just just to uh, just to give a uh, comparison, like a lot of my friends have been wondering, oh, why is Lisa such a big deal suddenly after Demon Slayer? You know, she's been popular even before Demon Slayer. She's been popular since like Fate Zero and stuff like that. But, you know, it, she's only been popular within anime circles. And after yeah. Demon Slayer, she got invited to the biggest uh, music uh, program in Japan that happens at the end of the year, you know. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. With Agassin. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Baba tweeted that he was dreaming of one day sending flowers to uh to lisa once she gets on there <laughs> and, oh my god like you know just to give a comparison as far as anime anime singers have been concerned the only other ones that have gotten onto that music program are nana mizuki tm revolution and muse from love live so yeah yeah um it's it's pretty much on that level that um yeah you know uh People who you would not consider otaku, people who don't go to Akihabara, are aware of it and enjoy it. And it's that yeah. kind of you know mainstream Hollywood type of feel that you have to remember. It's appealing to. I don't know how I got here. Help in chat just said my mum loved Demon Slayer. <laughs> 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 I, I don't know who you are, but thank you for the comment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess I guess that's one one <laughs> another uh, supporting proof. Like you can show it to your mom, you can show it to your grandparents, even. Yeah, and it's, yeah. It's something that they would, you know. Because I can it's... definitely see like a grandpa like watching the first few arcs of Demon Slayer and being like, "Yeah, this is familiar to me. This is like old samurai movies. Yeah, or martial arts films. Yeah, yeah. I, I I I I think you're right. I think that's definitely a big part." of why it has such a broad appeal. I think a lot of it is luck though. Like it just came around at the right time, mm, right. you know. Uh, you gotta consider like COVID as well. Like everyone's like hunkered down. And if there's like an anime that appeals to everyone, more people than ever are going to be watching anime right now or reading manga. So the factors all kind of combined together to 
let this anime rock skyrocket up to phenomenal levels of success. I don't think that necessarily says anything about it being better or worse than other anime. It's just a matter of it got there when others didn't. Right, right. And I can imagine like a lot of the people who are who are you know buying the manga and making it skyrocket to enormous proportions. You know, uh, a lot of them probably don't even you know they're not addicted to it. Uh, mm. They just, you know, uh, imagine your friends who aren't even into anime. What do they watch? Uh, they most most of most people watch whatever's trending on Netflix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they enjoy it, finish the season, go on to the next, and that's how Demon Slayer fits in. You know, um, it's the kind of thing that you know when when you're done watching whatever it is you've been watching on Netflix or whatever streaming service. Um, it's something that you can play next and you'll enjoy it like uh whereas you know many other anime is going to be very hit or miss it's just very inoffensive i suppose to anime. yeah yeah it's just very inoffensive so it's easy for like a, a wide range of audiences especially in japan to just digest they can just put it on they can watch it and they can get something out of it there's nothing that's really a deal breaker unless you're like me and you hate Zenitsu of all your guts. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean... I, but I'm, I, just, I'm lot... just more critical than like most of the people that would be watching this anime. Yeah, sure. So am I. I mean, again, it's not one of my favorite anime. It's it's just something that's fun. Hmm. Uh, I've, I've been watching a lot more off of my backlog the past few months. And, you know... Well, what, um... what convinced you to read the manga? Well... Number one, it was short. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Again, that's it, definitely one thing I have over One Piece. <laughs> 109. No, it's 210 chapters, I think. Yeah, it's, yeah, around that number. And that's it. I was able to read it like in the span of maybe two weeks. Um, you know, and that was. If it if it had more chapters than that, I wouldn't even bother. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, at, at the same time, you know, I was pretty much uh, kind of bored <laughs> at home. <laughs> I um, think yeah, I think that's everybody that watched this. Anime. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you know, uh, it was a time I, I watched the manga at the time that uh, the movie was really trending in Japan. I was wondering, eh, yeah, I wonder what's I wonder what's with the with with that arc? Why it's so why it's so popular why it's getting so many people to watch of course i can't watch it i can't i can't go to japan and watch it's coming it out on blu-ray in three time. months people we just got a blu-ray announcement so three more months yeah 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 <laughs> so uh yeah so that you know I, I i ended up reading that arc the arc was pretty good ended up reading the next arcs and you know after <laughs> two weeks i was done <laughs> It just kind of happened. <laughs> yeah, it just kind of happened. Like you know, I, I I didn't you know. It's not like other anime that I'm really super into. Like after reading it, I wanna you know, join a Discord server, or find people to talk about on on Twitter. Thank you for the uh, follow. I don't know how I got here. Help. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, it's just. Uh, something that was good enough for me to enjoy uh, after it was done it remains in in my heart as something that uh, i had fun with and yeah i i think that's how it is for most people it's uh just the ability to be enjoyable for for millions yeah rather than just a few hundred thousand yeah i guess that's true generally anime or even with any sort of fiction if it doesn't rock the box the boat too much that's going to maximize its widespread appeal to different demographics so that's so it it's a it's a it's a jack of all trades master of none sort of situation where yeah and that's how capitalism kind of works <laughs> if you can maximize the demographic then it'll be more successful than any other anime what a weird, what a weird world we live in. <laughs> Why can't things be popular because they're good? Why can't there be an objective standard of what's good? Why can't everybody agree with my taste? 
<laughs> because people, there are different people. You know? uh, time and time again, there are things that I love, and I, it ends up that there are people who don't like what I love, and yeah. you know, just gotta accept it. Hey, Lobo said a funny thing to me today, just going off what he's saying in chat. Um, he was like, "If recreators got a a, a um an anime by Ufotable and it was like premiering on Netflix, maybe that would be the best anime ever." <laughs> Maybe, Lobo, maybe. Shout outs yeah, shout outs to recreators. <laughs> Go watch recreators, everyone. Um, but yeah, like it's just kind of the timing, the the aesthetic and the factors of its release are just, just kind of snowboard into something crazy. Yeah. There's not Pretty any much. big answer to it. It's just just is what it is. Um, and, and since Lobo asked, um, Demon Slayer or My Hero Academia, Pepe, you haven't watched My Hero Academia, so I don't think you can No, I, I can't answer that. Sorry. I'll say My Hero, not because I like My Hero a lot. I just find it a little bit more interesting than Demon Slayer. Some of those arcs and some of those characters are actually quite good. Um, even if on the whole, I would say it's a pretty average anime. It's, it, it has higher highs than than Demon Slayer ever did for me. So that's my hot take. <laughs> but um, that's a bad way to end a podcast. <laughs> By just saying another anime is better. So how else can we end I this mean, podcast? <laughs> it's fine, you know. It's it's There are tons of anime that are better. But, sure. you know, at least I'm and thinking. And tons of anime that, that are uh, worse. Yeah, tons of anime that are much worse. God damn it. Um, <laughs> at least... I'm thankful that it could, you know, break into this mainstream appeal and, you know, hopefully get more people into anime. Like maybe yeah. uh, it'll yeah. help uh, old folks who always thought anime was for kids to, you know, actually look into more yeah, interesting that's a, that's, stuff that's, that's and a find good something way, better. That's a good way of putting it, Pepe. You know, this is a net positive for anime as a medium because it's going to introduce so many more audiences to it. It's the Wii Sports of anime. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to end the podcast. I like that. <laughs> oh my god! The more I think about it, the more funny it gets. <laughs> well, I think that's yeah, that's a good place to wrap up. So yeah, um, thanks everyone for joining the podcast. Um, I I feel like I've learned a little bit just through discussing this of having a better perspective on why this anime is what it is and where it is um it's never going to be my favorite i don't know if i'm going to read the manga maybe i'll just look up spoilers on wikipedia on, on the, like the fan wiki or something <laughs> but um yeah uh if you have your own thoughts on demon slayer and why it's popular be sure to leave a comment and i'll definitely respond to you just yeah send send us something and we'll, we'll get back to you but yeah, um, thank you for joining me, Pepe. This has been fun to have a little chat with you again. Yeah, quite fun indeed. I Thanks do, for having me. I'd, I'd be ha more than happy to do more podcasts and like like this in the future. Um, fucking Lobo Kendo has asked me to um, do a podcast with him on Uma Musume. So that might be oh, happening wow. soon. <laughs> yeah, I didn't... Be, I swear, if, if you start playing the game, I will... Oh, it's I based. Mean, on, it's surprised. it's based on a game. I didn't know that. <laughs> no, it, it's it's an anime that was planned to be released together with a game, and the game took them like over a year to finish. And now that it's out, it's super popular. It's like, uh, you know beating Fate Grand Order in terms of revenue. Really? <laughs> <laughs> For the first few weeks, yeah, so far. Wow. <laughs> but yeah, um, Levo gave me a pretty good um spiel about it in our Mario Golf stream. So if you want to hear that, like, go watch the VOD for that. But yeah, I am I'm never thought I'd watch an anime about horse racing, but it's girls, idol girls, but I guess this is happening now. <laughs> so yeah, um, but yeah, I definitely want to do more podcasts in the future. I'm sure there'll be stuff that me and Pepe want to talk about as well. So yeah, we'll play it as, play it along as we go. But um. 
Yeah, so just as a heads up, tomorrow at 12pm ADT, I'm going to be streaming my first impressions of CrossCode A New Home, which is a new DLC, post-game DLC that's been released. It's going to have spoilers for CrossCode, so if you don't want to be spoiled, you probably shouldn't come. But all that said, if you do want to come, I'd be happy to have you. So yeah, once again, thanks for joining me, Pepe, and thanks to everybody in the audience, and we'll be signing out, so... Have a good one. Watch a good anime. Watch recreators. Any last word, Pepe? Uh, well, just give it a chance and see where it goes, you know? Are you talking about Demon Slayer or recreators? Or yeah, Uma Musume? about Demon Slayer, not recreators. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I'm so silly. All right. <laughs> Thanks for joining, everybody, and we'll catch you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.